So today's project, we're going to take this seven millimeter blank, it's one and eight twist, and turn it into a savage prefit for a gentleman in Texas. So this is the muzzle into the barrel. We're going to take it and open it up a little bit so I can tap it, put pipe threads in there for my chamber flushing system. You guys ever do this, you ain't got to put the three or four turns in them. I used to go way deeper than that, but I found it wasn't really needed. So it looks like we got a lot sticking out of there, and we do. And the reason we have that is because I'm going to turn it 2.6 inches. So we have an inch of clean outside barrel diameter. And that outside barrel diameter is gonna give us something to indicate off of when we go to contour barrel. All right, we got the barrel all indicated in. We can go out. Staying on zero. This one, staying on zero. So now that we're all indicated in, Next thing we got to do is cut our tenon and we'll get that set now. I'm going to set my Z, so I'll go forward, go in with our X, and we're going to face this off. Once this is all faced off and true, that's going to be our measurement for everything else on the tenon. Take another 10 off just so everything is nice and clean. There we go. Yeah, we're good there. Tool offset one. And I'm going to go Z face measure. And since we're over here, we can. Definitely just reset these so we know they're perfect. Stop it. One point two one nine seven. All right, let's cut some threads. So I got a savage action here. Try screwing it on. Screws on good. So what I'm gonna do here is set our Z depth and then I'll run the program so the drill bit can cut. I right, got the coolant going, we'll start our drilling cycle. It takes 200,000 specs. All right, now we're going to start a boring cycle. Bring on our coolant so it, went, so it goes through the barrel. 5%, cycle start. All right, we got this all reamed out. That chamfer will be cut away once we plunge a reamer in there. 
All right, got the right pilot in there. Fits pretty tight. Can't get a bigger one in there. So we're going to put this pilot on the reamer and uh, get to reaming. Uh, we're going to edge up to this thing ever so slowly and set our Z off the shoulder. We'll go in after I push play and it'll start the cut cycle. So now we're starting the reaming process. All right, I got a go gauge. We're going to measure it here. And it measures 140. So we're going to take off 12 more thousands, and that'll put us at 127. All right, I went in all the way, took off 12 thousands, so we should be good to go. We'll back her out. Oh, I don't know if you can see it. I got my go gauge in there against the shoulder, pushing 126, 125, 126, so we're good to go. So now let's do our chamber measurement and see how much run out we got. Our right, chamber run out, we got zero run out here, we're going to go away from the lands. Okay, and now we're in the throat area. No movement there. Keep going. There it drops into the neck. Keep going. Now we're clear out here. And zero run out. So all the way in, all the way out, zero run out. All right, our inspection earlier proved to be perfect run out wise. We'll do our visual. All of them are running identical. They all cut the same. And we go to our lead and it's all the same. And we keep going and we got a beautiful chamber all the way out. All right, we got all the chamber work done, and then I use a Savage nut to hold it so I don't crush the threads. And then I dial in this tenon here. So this tenon is dialed in perfectly concentric to the bore. I contour after I do the chambering. The reason I do that is so everything's 100% to the bore inside and out. And then in here, I just run it off a live center into the bore. Um, I come up with this system, I ain't seen nobody else do it, but this is a pneumatic follow rest. I run about 10 to 15 pounds of pressure on it, and then a bag of shot to absorb the vibration, and it's been working for the most part. Um, it's not 100% trouble free, but we're getting there. The more tweaks I did, if I started off with just two of these plungers. I added a third, that helped, and the shot helped even more. Uh, coolant, uh, using a different coolant helped take away the cutting pressures, so that's coming along. And then uh, perfecting my speeds and feeds has really been a chore, and that's really helped. So life is good. We're going to get this thing going, and then we'll come back to you once she's running. All right, we got it going. You can see it's the ways out around and hopefully we don't get no chatter once we get past the first two and then the third one should be pretty good victory all right we'll keep on going until she's finished so now we're doing the finish pass I leave ten thousands to finish it off and once she gets to the end she'll be done all right, so we got it all profiled. Life is grand. We'll take it out of there, do the muzzle work, and then uh, polish it up. All right, we're doing the muzzle work now. Everything's dialed in. We can go in and out. We're still reading on zero. 
So now we're going to put on our gang tooling. And uh, first it's going to cut the tenon. Then it's going to come in and cut the threads. And after the threads, it's going to come in and do the crown. All right, we got a tool offset set. So we're going to go here to our muzzle profile. So I'll start. That and cycle start again. Next thing we're going to do is our muzzle crown. This goes in there and cuts an 11 degree target crown in there. Little by little by little. Alright, got the threads all done. Everything looks real good. Crown's good. Life is wonderful. So, the final step, I use a flexible belt sander. And then I made my own barrel polishing unit. Um, it's an old wood lathe that I made a spindle for. It takes a three-jaw chuck. And then I got a live center for it. Turns about 500 RPM, nice and slow. The first pass goes against the barrel. That takes off all the imperfections, if there are any. And then the final pass goes with the grain, and it gives it a nice hatch. And then I go over it with emery cloth by hand. And that's what you see here. The final step is the laser engraving. So now that I got all cleaned up, I wipe it off with some Mr. Crane and Magic Eraser. And it gets rid of all the smoke. And that is that.